in the NFC. Philadelphia, cross your fingers, will be good. I think they will. It's a big city. NFC's got the bigger cities. Uh, but the Rams still feel sometimes like a baseball NBA market. So it's like, boy, we can mm. really use Chicago. If I was our bosses, I would have said, can you keep it easy in the beginning for Caleb? And I looked at their schedule. They have really? a... They get Tennessee to open, no divisional gritty NFC North games, Shrags until week 11. It's like they don't Colin. face any elite defenses until week 11. Like that is easing. Is it not easing Caleb into this? It's a there's there's a reason why the the Fox NFL pregame shows beat CBS every week and it's because it's the better shows. I mean we have wonderful talent. Yes. It's great. It also helps <laughs> that we're in markets like Chicago and New York and Philadelphia and you know we San Francisco. We go in through all these markets. When you look at this schedule here that's lined up with you, what's interesting to me is yes the Titans week one Fox and then you get these games in this back half those logos Packers Vikings. Lions, Niners, like the the Caleb push is going to be big in the second half, and maybe they get a little bit of a cushion here. But if I told you last year at this time that a year down the line, week two, Chicago at Houston was going to be on <laughs> Sunday night football. I know. You would have laughed me out of the game. But that is how much expectation there is for Caleb and the Bears. And it's not just Caleb. It's A, they're the number two media market in the entire country. And they're the second city for a reason. And number, and, and the next part about it is they added Keenan Allen. They added, uh, you know, the running back DeAndre Swift. They had Roma Dunze fall to them at nine. Like, I've been prone to hyping up teams in the off season before based on draft and free agency. And sometimes you fall on your face. There is a real expectation and the league is showing us there's a real expectation that the bears are going to be relevant in the second half of the season. And yep. those games that are on Fox and those primetime games, those aren't just going to be a hey, look at the, look at the rookie quarterback, uh, get his butt kicked. No, this is going to be a relevant bears team seen most by the fact week two Sunday night, and then Thanksgiving Day, they put them against the Lions where they could have put any different opponent against Detroit. They're like, no, Caleb Williams is going Thanksgiving. So, okay. First off, it's funny. For those of you from Chicago, uh, I didn't realize it was the second city. I actually studied and um, am an alumni and performed at the second city, the you know the sketch and improv theater. So I, did, I never realized that. So that's pretty funny. Um, kind of embarrassing that I didn't know that. But um, in terms of football, I mean, listen. For those of you who don't know, like Colin has this conspiracy theory, which I think is kind of crazy. You know, he thinks that the NFL is like, we really want Caleb Williams to succeed and the Chicago Bears to succeed. So we're trying to like give them like an, him an easy schedule, get him established, and then give him his tougher games down the road, which I think is kind of, you know, I, I don't think it's fair for Colin to do that because on one side, when other people say those types of things, he calls all the fans like sad and lonely and weird and all this type of stuff. And it's part of the reason why I started this channel in the first place. Because I was just like, you know, like, why why are you calling all of us fans and people that are interacting with this stuff sad, lonely, and weirdos? Like, it's not right. And now he has the conspiracy. He, he's like, the NFL wants to see Aaron Rodgers and the Jets fail, so they give them a really hard schedule. Wants to see Mahomes succeed, so he gives them an easy, he, him an easy schedule. And wants to see Chicago and the Bears and, you know, Caleb succeed, so they got an easier schedule. And it's just like... How is it okay that you're saying all of this, but when other people say it, it's just bizarre nonsense? I don't think that's fair. So listen, I'm not going to get into whether I think that the NFL did anything on purpose. I have no idea, and it really doesn't matter to me. But I'm looking at this schedule. Well, it should matter because if it is real, then that's nonsense. But besides the point, the Bears schedule is this. Listen, they do this with a lot of teams, a lot of competitive, intense, big market um, divisions where – you like to have the games that really matter at the back end of the season. And there is strong reason for this. We see this, especially like in the NFC East, the Cowboys and the Giants and the Commanders and the Eagles, they're always playing near each other at the end of the season because they're fighting for a division. And so we want those games to matter the most. And it is a gamble because theoretically you have the risk of t these teams being injured or irrelevant like the Commanders or the Giants. But we know the Packers are going to be good. We know the Lions are going to be good. We know the San Francisco 49ers are going to be good. And we're pretty confident that the Bears are going to be good. That makes this second half of the season 
wildly exciting and in a way where we're just like what's going to happen because if you put like the Packers in the beginning of the season or the Lions or whoever then it's one of those things where because I think all these teams will be fighting for the division or even like the number one seed and it's like if you put them in like week two or week three maybe they drop that game whether it's the the Packers or or the Bears and now what you're talking about come time week 15 16 they're now like saying oh if only the so-and-so didn't drop that game in week two, they would be in the driver's seat for the number one seed. That's less interesting topic because that becomes just a little footnote, a little like, you know, a little like, ah, isn't that a bummer? Well, anyway, like this is what we're dealing with. But now when you do it this way, it's what's going to happen? Oh my God, the Bears are going to be are going to be playing the Packers and the the Lions and this if they just win 3 out of 4 of those games they win the division or 2 out of 4 whatever it may be it makes it so much more exciting and it also builds it up because it's the anticipation it's not the reflection of ah oh, if only they played better in week 2 then they'd have the number 1 seed or they would have this division locked that's less exciting it's more exciting to not really know and now you're going into this near the end of the season and it's like all right let's go but it is also technically a risk because for all we know, Jordan Love gets injured or Caleb Williams or whoever gets injured. Now you're not going to have that do it, that, that matchup. But I think this game, th- this uh, schedule is a great schedule for if you're, uh, especially if you're a Chicago Bears fan. And I think there's going to be some really exciting narratives to work with. I mean, let's say Caleb Williams goes down to Houston and, and totally out, out balls um, CJ Stroud. I mean, the, the, the narrative is going to, is the storylines are going to be huge. People are going to be losing their mind because CJ Stroud, right? And the Houston Texans were the darlings of last season, right? I mean, they, they skyrocketed. Everybody was all high on them and people are really high on the Texans now. And they think CJ Stroud, you know, it's like people are already saying, well, CJ Stroud surpassed Patrick Mahomes, right? You have all these kind of wild conversations. If Caleb Williams now week two says, no, 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 no. Like I, it's me. It's none of these other guys. It's me. I'm the next coming. Here we are. It's going to be huge. And if he struggles, it'll be huge. Because either way, all of the talking around Caleb Williams is going to be magnified, right? If he balls out against Houston and beats the Texans, everyone's going to be all on the Caleb Williams train. It's going to be hype, 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 hype. And it'll be more like, well, CJ Stroud, not that good. And if Caleb Williams now doesn't play great against the Texans, it'll be, was he overdrafted? Should have the Bears kept the Justin Fields? Was this a mistake? You know, like all this, is he not mature enough? And it'll be bring on all the hate. So to me, this schedule is set up because he's going to play the Houston Texans. He wins that game. That's massive because it's CJ Stroud and the Texans versus the Bears. And then you have another newer quarterback with AR with, with Shane Steichen. That's a big deal. If he beats that, it's like, yeah, again, you guys are these younger quarterbacks, but you're not me. I'm I leapfrogged you. Same thing. If he beats Matthew Matthew Stafford and Sean McVay, massive. Two Super Bowl winners. That's who they are, right? And then you have Bryce Young, who people kind of really have discarded since then. Again, leapfrogging another number one pick. And same thing with now uh Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars. He beats them. He's just leapfrogging quarterback after quarterback after quarterback after quarterback. And so all of those things matter. And then now another quarterback um, in the same draft, of course, with the commanders. So I just think that this schedule is set up. And again, not on purpose. I'm just saying in general, where whoever the powers that be is set up to have the Bears and Caleb Williams just be just magnifying the storyline because you can really build this foundation where if he now just like even if he just wins six out of those first nine games, Again, he will be beating legit bona fide coaches and quarterbacks. And it's going to just continue to build, 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 build. And then, then you're going to get into the into the gauntlet. Then it's going to be the ruthless Packers and the Lions and the 49ers. And, you know, if he's winning those games, it's going to be insane. I mean, people will lose their mind. They really will. But like I said, I really think that it's going to be such a... It's going to be a bandwagon for the Chicago Bears either way. It's just going to be which direction, right? Because if they lose, if he drops a game against the Texans or he drops a game against um, the Jaguars or whoever or the Packers, um, it's going to be one of those things where it's like, see, he's not good enough. He's a bust. 
the they the, the offense looks lost i don't know what they're doing out there right like and and if they win it's gonna be like now, I told you he was a once-in-a-lifetime generational talent. The Chicago Bears are going to be amazing for years to come. He's going to be better than Patrick Mahomes. Could could Caleb Williams be the GOAT? Like, you're going to have, like, these insane conversations swinging left and right, left and right, left and right. And so um, I'm all for it because I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be, you know, interesting. And I love when we get these big-name players competing at the highest level so i i mean i'm really excited to see him against the texans i'm really excited to see him against the rams of course the packers and the lions those are going to be great games really excited against the 49ers because i think when we get to week 11 and onward it's those games i really think the packers the niners um the lions and if the bears get off to a hot start like they could all be fighting for a top seed in the nfc i really really do i mean those are my top t's teams plus the eagles so i I just think like it's those games are going to matter so much so much and so i think caleb will be settled he'll go through his growing pains he's obviously going to have some bad moments bad games it's just going to happen it's happened to patrick mahomes it's happened to cj stroud tom brady every quarterback under the sun so of course it's going to happen to caleb um but i really think that this is set up for for success and i'm really excited to see it unfold um, I think it's going to be a great season. I think it's it is going to be a roller coaster ride, but not necessarily in a negative way. Um, I I think the Bears, um, based off of what I'm seeing, even if they just win like half of their tough games, um, I think they have a playoff bid. You know, I really do. So um, this is going to be interesting. Uh, I I think Caleb Williams can really hit the ground running, and we will have to just wait and see. But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. What do you think about this schedule? And do you think that the NFL tried to help Caleb Williams and Shish and Chicago uh, succeed like Colin keeps saying? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of. I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much, and see you next time.